What is going on guys, Brad here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do basic bass measurements in Room EQ Wizard so you can figure out what the bass is doing in your room. Sound good? Let's get started. Now, if you are new to Room EQ Wizard, it may seem overly complicated and daunting at first, especially when you open it up. I mean, it's throwing a lot of stuff at you, there's buttons everywhere, and you, you might not know what they do. But honestly, once you get it all set up and understand some basic things and where a couple things are, it's actually really simple to just jump in and get some measurements really, really quickly. And it's a very, very powerful tool, not to mention free, that allows you to see not just the bass response of your room, which is the focus of this video, but the response of every one of your other speakers. But that is a topic for another video. For now, we're just gonna focus on the bass response. Now we are gonna need a few things to interface with Rumi Q Wizard to do the measurements I'm about to do. So obviously you're gonna need some type of laptop or PC or even a Windows 10 tablet with a USB input. You're also gonna need a measurement mic such as the U-Mic one that I'm using. You're also gonna need an HDMI cable and possibly a lengthy one depending on how far away your laptop or tablet or whatever is. And you might also need a USB extension cable. And finally, we are gonna need some type of stand for the U-Mic. You can either use a tripod with a microphone attachment or something else like a mic stand works perfectly. That's what I have and that's what I use. So you're gonna need a few of those things. Now, if you're interested in any of the products that I just mentioned or listed, minus the laptop, of course, then check the links in the description below. They are Amazon affiliate links. So I do get a small commission from those when you use them. Definitely appreciate it and it doesn't cost you any extra. And also, if you're new here, I do post home theater and gaming related content, including videos just like this one. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button and clicking that bell notification so you'll never miss out on a new video. Now, with all that said, let's go over to the laptop and set up Rumi Q Wizard so we can start taking some measurements. All right, so here we are on my laptop and first we wanna get Rumi Q Wizard and we're just gonna go to Google. We can type in Room EQ Wizard. It's top one right there. And we can just follow this link here, go to downloads. I would just download the top one personally. Uh, it includes Java. Now, once you have Rumi Q Wizard installed and good to go, we wanna get the calibration files for your measurement microphone if they have them. So for the UMic one, there's a little pamphlet inside that says, hey, go to this website, type in this number, and then download the calibration files. And then you wanna save those in a spot on your computer that you'll remember. So now we're gonna go ahead and open up Room EQ Wizard. All right, and it's gonna detect that we have a U-Mic 1 plugged in. It's gonna ask if we have a calibration file, and we do. Now this is should be the same for many other measurement microphones, but this is unique to U-Mic 1. So we're gonna click yes, we're gonna click browse, and I'm already in the folder where my calibration files are. And you'll notice I have two of them, one labeled 90 degrees and the other one just regular. So the 90 degrees, is the one that we wanna use. I have the microphone set up at the main listening position pointed straight up. So that means 90 degrees. Now, if we had the microphone close to an individual speaker or subwoofer and we were pointing it right at it, then we wanna use this first one here. But we're gonna use the 90 degree one right now and we're gonna hit close, we're good. And we're gonna maximize this so we can get maximum screen space. So after that, we're gonna come into preferences, click on preferences and you'll notice we're under Java for drivers. Now, since we're just doing base measurements, this is completely fine. We don't need to worry about any other setup. We're really just focusing on the subwoofers and the bass response. And so for that, we can just go with Java and the default device. Now, I will say that you wanna make sure that this is selected in Windows 10 down here in the bottom. You wanna make sure that's correct. So you can see I have the HDMI output going to the down on AVR Intel display audio. So my default device is that. And then for our input device, you'll notice it says you mic one. That's exactly what we want. We can leave this everything else at default. We don't have to worry about calibrating a sound card or anything because we're using HDMI. Now, if we go to our Cal files, you'll notice that we have some separate things here. We really don't need to worry about this. We have this set up already. Now, if you have another measurement mic that was not detected initially, then we could come in here, click browse and find the right file. Now, you don't really need to do it for both of these. This is just fine. You can go in here and add the other calibration file if you want to, again, not needed. So right there, we're pretty much set up. Now we're almost ready to take measurements, but before we get started, what I like to do is I like to make sure that my overall level 
is the same for every single measurement I do. And we really only need to set that once unless we start playing around with EQ. But a simple way to do that in here is Click on the SPL meter icon. It'll bring up the SPL meter. So it's using the U-Mic 1 to give you an SPL reading. It's it's exactly the same. Actually, it's far more accurate than a regular SPL meter like a Radio Shack SPL meter. So we click on that and then we wanna click on generator. Make sure that the noise button is selected and that we have pink periodic noise. And then for speaker cal, that's what we want. What we're doing is we're basically gonna hit play. It's gonna play a calibration tone out of the left speaker and I want that to read 75 decibels. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that play button here and I'm gonna raise the volume up until it reads 75 decibels. Right there we are, we are at 75 decibels and you might've saw it you know, vary a little bit here and there, that's fine. And then now we wanna make sure that our subwoofer is reading about the same. Now personally, I like to run my subs a little hot at times because I might not be listening to my normal volume, I might be listening to a lower volume. So here you'll see them at 76, 77 dB, uh, but you can just normally set these to around 75 dB. You'll still be a little hot on the overall subwoofer level, but it's preferable to have that uh, when you're listening at lower volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here and you're gonna be able to see that I'm at 76, 77. So now we are ready to start taking measurements. And to do that, we're just gonna click measure, upper left-hand corner here. And basically, uh, all these settings, we can adjust to what we want from the measurement. So length under settings here is 256K. And we can leave that at default for now. This is gonna go by really quick. Now, if you wanted extreme accuracy, you can come up here and add you know, 256 to this. So we're at 512 one amp, like we can do whatever we want here. 256 is good for general measurements, but if you wanna get really down to the nitty gritty and start dialing in EQs and stuff like that, using maybe uh, the EQ app for your sub, then you could select a higher length and that will just take a little longer, be a little more accurate. All right, so then on the left-hand side here, under our range, we don't really wanna measure this right now, you know, 10 to 20,000 kilohertz, 20,000 kilohertz, 20,000 hertz, because that's gonna measure basically the whole frequency response from the lowest octave to the highest octave. So we want something like 10 to 200 hertz is what I normally do, especially when you're just measuring bass. Uh, and so that's fine. The minus 12 dBFS is fine too. And then over here, we can just leave this stuff the same. Uh, you can add a small delay. So you have five, 10, three seconds, whatever you wanna do in case you're kind of in the way when you're gonna do a measurement. So you just hit, you know, whatever you want, put it in. You can step out of the way and it gives you enough time to do that. I'm just gonna leave it at zero because I'm, I'm sat behind the measurement mic and I'm not in the way of anything. So, and then output, we have our choice of left, right, or both left and right. I'm just gonna stick to left right now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start. You're gonna see it run through the measurement and then we'll, we'll take a look at, at what it comes back at. All right, so as you can see, it looks a little wonky right now. So there's a couple things we can do. One, I only measured from 10 hertz to 200 hertz, so I can click this button down on the bottom right-hand corner. That's gonna get us maximum screen size so we can actually see what's going on. And then we could hit this plus and minus button here to kind of bring things more in line so we can see what's going on. And then we can bring uh, this up over here. So as, as you can see, we got uh, you know some dips here and there. And this might look a little strange. And so what you could do is you can apply some smoothing. And so for that, I like to go up to graph and choose uh, var smoothing, var smoothing, whatever. It means variable smoothing. And you'll notice it just kind of cleans it up just a little bit. And it's a little easier to, to decipher. Now what we can do from there is we can actually drag this, uh, this little cursor around and we're able to see, okay, we have, you know, this is at 76.29. Uh, dB and we're at 17.8, so roughly 18 hertz. And we could really see our frequency response as well as, you know, we want this kind of to be on the flatter side. And this is after Odyssey and everything. So we have some little nulls here and there, but you could see that we are really able to see the frequency response of the bass in our room, as well as some maybe potential issues that we might need to look at fixing like this, this nasty null right here. Now, what if you want to maybe say take multiple measurements and compare those against one another? How can you do that? Well, honestly, it's super easy. Just click the all SPL button. Again, we're gonna click two to 200. 
Now say, I wanna see what this looks like without Odyssey. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and disable Odyssey in the receiver. So now I've disabled Odyssey. And what I do wanna do, because sometimes Odyssey can mess up with the overall level, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the SPL meter, click on the generator and the speaker cowl and hit the play button. And what I'm looking for is that, you know, 75-ish dB. And that's close enough that we're not gonna be able to really notice a difference. You'll see maybe some slight variation in the measurements. Uh, but this comes down to, you know, what Odyssey is doing with the speaker EQ. So we can close out of those, gonna hit measure again, and we can label this dual subs, no Odyssey or odd, whatever you wanna do. And we're just gonna measure the same thing. So let's gonna go ahead and do it there. Alrighty, so what we wanna do is we wanna apply the same type of smoothing. So we're gonna go up to graph, bar smoothing and now we're looking at two different measurements back to back and what's great is they're both down here so you can turn one off turn one on whatever you want to do and then when you put your mouse cursor over it it will highlight it in the window for you so obviously the red and yellow highlighted one is the one before odyssey so we can see exactly what it's doing and you know you might go why am i missing all that stuff with odyssey it sounds weird and you can literally look at this and go oh wow i am missing out on a bunch of stuff so i'm going to go ahead and turn odyssey back on and another great little tool that you can use is actually see how your overall base level is compared to the rest of you know the speakers in your system uh, for this we're just going to be using the left and right uh, but we can see if our level is way too hot on our subs or if our level is way too low or if it's right where it needs to be depending on personal preference. So what we can do is we can go click measure again. We're gonna label this full sweep. We can label it full sweep and then we're gonna change the 200 to 20,000. So again, we're just measuring the left speaker along with the subwoofer. So I'm gonna click start here and see what happens. And again, it goes by really quick and we're gonna apply some slight smoothing. Actually, we're not going to because I'll show you real quick why. So you notice uh, we're still only looking at the, the base region here, the 10 to 200. So let's turn those two off. And what we wanna do is we wanna click the 20 to 20,000. And whoa, what's all this stuff? Remember how I said smoothing kind of makes it a little more discernible and you can decipher things easily. When we apply that variable smoothing, there we go. So now we can see that after Odyssey, if we set everything to 75 decibels, you know, we're gonna have some peaks and nulls here and there, no room is perfect. Uh, but this lets us know that, hey, look, our sub is a little hot. Now, personally, I do like it like this if I'm listening at a lower volume, but I might wanna back off a couple dB just to get it more in line with the overall sound. It really just depends on how you like your system to sound. But this is a really great way to kind of see what Odyssey is doing before and after. So I'll go ahead and run one more sweep and we'll turn off Odyssey again and just kind of compare the two and then wrap up the video. All right, I've turned off Odyssey there. I'm gonna click measure and we're just gonna label this no odd just like we did with the first one and just click start. All right, we're gonna apply that same smoothing to that one so we could compare like for like and yeah, look at this. So we highlight the full sweep there with Odyssey and then the full sweep there without it, you can see you know, we got some uh, differences in the overall frequency response. So Odyssey is doing something. It is fixing certain issues with the sound, but it is also kind of making things a little worse in certain areas. So like this area here, for instance, it's relatively uh, smooth without Odyssey, but with Odyssey, it's, there's a massive null there. So we need to figure that out, but that is a subject for another video. So yeah, I mean, Room EQ Wizard is a free, really, really powerful tool to see what is going on with your frequency response in your room, be it with your speakers or subwoofer, it is just an extremely helpful resource to have. And speaking of helpful, if you found this video helpful at all, please give it a thumbs up. It lets me know that you appreciate this type of content and found value out of it. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll catch you in the next one where I go to a bar where everyone knows my name. Good afternoon everybody.